Firebase gives freedom to developers to focus on enhancing the user experience rather than maintaining servers. It comes with many advanced features, such as the ability to update data in real time, serve static websites, and a simple JavaScript SDK for interacting with it. Using Firebase with Vue makes building and scaling complex web applications super easy. Today, we'll be building a Vue 3 application using Firebase as the backend. The app will allow users to create a basic customer records management system in which a user can perform CRUD operations. Most importantly, we'll be looking at using Firebase with the new Vue 3 Composition API, performing CRUD operations on the Cloud Firestore, and learning how to deploy our application to Firebase so it can be accessed from anywhere in the world. For those of you who don't know, Firestore is a non-SQL cloud database to store and sync data for client and server-side development. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of how you can use Firebase and Vue to build amazing applications. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. A link can be found to the full source code in the description below. Let's get started by using the Vue CLI to create our Vue application. This may look different depending on the version you have installed, but we will need to select manual features and enable the Vue router. We'll be using the router to create different pages, one for updating the users and one for viewing and creating users. Also make sure you select Vue 3 as we'll be using the Composition API for this application. Once the Vue project is set up, we'll also need to install Firebase. This will give us access to the SDK so we can access the Firestore. We need to create our Firebase project to get configuration details. Let's head over to Firebase and create a new application. The process is straightforward and should only take a few seconds. Once the project is created, we'll also need to get our web configuration. Once again, fill out the information and copy the Firebase configuration details. The last thing we'll need to do before we head back to our Vue application is enable Cloud Firestore. To do this, we'll click on Database and Create Database. We'll configure the security results for test mode and create a new user collection. This will hold all the information about each user. You can additionally add any other collections here depending on the requirements of your application. Now that we have everything set up, we can go back to our Vue.js project and paste in the configuration we copied earlier. Let's create a Firebase JS file where we'll set up and initialize our Firebase configuration. We'll also grab the collection we just created since we'll be using it to create, read, update, and delete users. This Firebase JS file will contain all we need for interacting with Firebase. So let's also create some helper functions we can import in our view components. We'll create a function for each of the CRUD operations. First, we'll need a create function that will add a user to the user's collection. For the get user function, we'll accept the user's ID and return the documentation if it exists in the user's collection. We'll also need an update function and a delete function, which are pretty trivial to implement. We'll also create a composition hook that will return a ref to an array of users from the database. To do this, we'll add a listener onto the user collection so that its updates whenever changes in the user collection are detected. Creating this listener will return us a cleanup function, which we'll call on the ununmounted lifecycle hook. Now, we can import any of these functions into our view components for calling and interacting with Firebase. Before we create any of our components, I just want to quickly mention I've imported the bootstrap CSS into the index.html file to add styling to our application. As I stated earlier, in our application, we'll have two routes. The first will be for viewing and creating users, and the second will be for editing users. The edit URL will have an ID parameter, and we'll need to provide it so that we know which user we are updating. We'll start with creating the user create form, which will be part of the home page. It will simply be a form with a name and email input. When the user clicks submit, we'll use the create user function we previously defined to insert the user into the Firebase collection. Testing this out, we can see that whenever we create a user, 
it is inserted into our Firebase store. To view all users, we'll create another component. We'll use our load users hook, which returns an array of users from the Firebase store. We can iterate over each user, display their name and email, and add two action buttons. The edit will redirect the user to the edit URL with the ID set of the user we are iterating over. And the second will simply call the delete user function and pass the user ID. Looking at our progress, we can delete view, and create users. Let's finish this off by adding the editing page. The edit page will be similar to the create user form. There'll be a form which asks for a name and email, and when the user clicks update, it will call our update function we created in the Firebase JS file. We can grab the user ID from the URL by calling the use router hook. Once the user clicks submit, we should redirect them back to the home page by pushing a new path onto the router. We will also want to show information about the current user in the form. So we can add an on-mounted lifecycle hook that will get the user based on the router ID, pull the user from Firebase, and then assign its values to our form. And that's it. We now have a fully working user management system using Firebase. We can create, delete, and edit any user we wish. Now that we have our application created, let's deploy it to Firebase Hosting. To do this, we'll need to install Firebase Tools. We'll need to log in and then initialize our project with Yarn Firebase init. We'll want to enable the host option and associate our Firebase project with an existing one. Then we'll need to point our public directory to .dist and enable single page rewrite and make sure we don't overwrite the index.html file. Pointing our public directory to that disk will be the output of our view application when it generates. Now, whenever we want to deploy, we have to run yarn build to generate all the files and then yarn Firebase deploy to push them up to Firebase hosting. We can simplify this by adding a deploy command to our package.json file. This will allow us to run yarn deploy to build and deploy a project to Firebase. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned how to use Firebase with Vue. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other tutorials. Hope to see you in the next one.